Hello friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Michelle Fondant and I'm an author and speaker. And this series is called The Power to Manifest. Welcome, if you're new to my channel, please subscribe below, hit the bell, scroll up to all notifications, click on that bell and give the video a thumbs up. Today we are talking about transcending your limiting beliefs to manifest your desires. It's all well and good to have a list of intention and desires. And if you watched the last video on ditching New Year's resolutions, but doing your list instead, then you know that now you have this bona fide list of intentions and desires on all levels. Now, there are a few things that can block your manifestation of your desires, and some of those things are limiting beliefs. Now, you might be wondering, what does that mean exactly? What does that mean, a limiting belief? Well, I will give you one example, and then I will give you my example of a limiting belief that I had throughout my entire life that wasn't entirely put there by me. An example is if you put on your list of intentions and desires, I would like to manifest a job that pays me over $100,000 a year in salary. And your belief is that you're not really worth $100,000 a year because of some type of circumstance. For example, I don't have the education, I've never made that amount of money before, or for example, I'm only making $50,000 a year in salary for now, so of course it seems like a stretch to make $100,000 a year in salary. So all of those things are limiting beliefs that could jeopardize your power to manifest. I will give you my huge example on a limiting belief that I held for a really long time that wasn't even put there by me. And in fact, I had been saying since age 15, when my father brought me to California, and the city he brought me to in California was Anaheim, California, and we didn't even do Disneyland at that time. It just so happened that my dad had cousins that were living in Anaheim, California. We were taking a train trip across the country and we landed in Anaheim, California. But it was at that very moment when I was 15 years old that I fell in love with California and I knew the desire was deep within my heart and I said, I am going to live in California one day. I just know it. And I really wanted to move there for college. But what happened was limiting beliefs got in my way. First limiting belief that came to me, and we're gonna go over all of these one by one. The first limiting belief that came to me was, you can't move to California. You can't go to college in California. It's too expensive. And for the thing that you wanted to do, and that those were my parents speaking, and in particular, my mother telling me this, you cannot go to college in California because you want to study acting. First of all, there are earthquakes in California, so I don't want you to move there, said my mother. Secondly, you want to become an actress. You're going to be a starving artist out in California. You're going to be homeless or you're going to be waiting tables. Immediately, as soon as I came home, full of excitement from my trip to California, I shared this dream with my mother who put immediately all of these limiting beliefs on me. Nevertheless, I applied to college in California. I got into one college, but immediately my mother thwarted those efforts by saying, you're not going and I'm going to tell your father not to support you in going to California. Now fast forward many, many years that each time I had made the effort to try to move to California, I was stopped by other people in my life, not to mention my own father who has had a dream of moving to California, San Diego in particular, since he was about 20 years old when he first came over to the United States, he's had this dream of wanting to move to San Diego, California. And each time he made the effort to try to move to California, his answer that came back was always, it's too expensive. I can't move there, it's too expensive. 
I can't get the size house that I have here in Michigan. And so it's just way too expensive to move to California. Therefore, I cannot move to California. Fast forward all the way to 2017. In 2017, this dream had been deep within my heart for decades at this point. And it really came to the point at which I was really unhappy living where I was living. I knew I shouldn't be in that place. I always said to myself, I shouldn't be here. This is not the right place for me. I was living in the suburbs of DC. I just, while it's a very beautiful area to live in, I just didn't like it. I didn't like the weather. I didn't like being so far from the ocean. And I knew that that California dream was still within my heart. Now there were a few things, a few limiting beliefs that were holding me back. I went to, in July, 2017, I went to Tony Robbins, Unleash the Power Within, and in that program, you work on your limiting beliefs. And one of those limiting beliefs was, I can't move to California, it's too expensive. I don't know what I'm gonna do there. And also, I might lose custody of my son, which in fact is what happened. That was my limiting belief. But the second piece I could control, the second piece was, it's too expensive. Now, while the first piece resolved itself, and I'm proud to see that my son and I have a very happy and healthy relationship now, the second piece was a little stickier. It's too expensive. During this program and shortly thereafter, I worked through it, and the one limiting belief that was in my head was, I might go broke if I live in California, like many people have talked about before. And those especially involved in trying to live their dreams in California in the movie industry. While I wasn't trying to break into the movie industry, I had to change my thought. I had to change my limiting beliefs. What I said to myself was, there are all kinds of people who live in the state of California. In fact, there are people that are living in the streets in California, and there are people who are billionaires in California, and there are middle-class people living in California. There is something for everyone, and there's all types of accommodations for everyone, and even people who don't have very much money still live and reside, and they thrive in California. So instead of having the limiting belief of it's too expensive, I had to change it to, there are people in California who don't make very much money who still live there and they're happy. So once I changed my limiting beliefs surrounding my move to California, all of a sudden it clicked and things started to open up. And a year later after that program, Unleash the Power Within, which was in July of 2017, by June of 2018, I was living in Southern California, which had been my dream, as I mentioned, for decades. And honestly, all it took was lifting that one specific limiting belief to get me to where I am today. And I can say I'm very, very happy about it and I love living in Southern California. So you might be wondering, how do these limiting beliefs happen? Well, the first way that limiting beliefs happen is just like what happened to me. It was a parent who told me, no, you can't live your dreams. And you might have that experience too, where early on in life, you may have had a specific desire a specific dream, a specific intention of what you wanted to see manifested in your life, and a well-intending parent, grandparent, brother, sister, even mentor might have told you, oh, that's nice, but here's why you probably can't do that. Now, it's really ridiculous when you think about it because many people have overcome adversities in order to manifest their desires into manifesting the dreams that they have and just manifesting them into reality, no matter what the limitations are. But it's usually people who are not well secure in themselves and haven't respected themselves in living their own dreams that they come up with excuses for you as to why you can't live out your dreams even though you never asked for those excuses. 
You just came to them with an idea of your desires and they come back to you with all these limiting beliefs. Well, especially when you're young, when you're a young child or teenager, you tend to adopt those limiting beliefs because at that age, you tend to not know better. You tend to want to listen to your parents or elders, so you tack on these limiting beliefs. The second way we tend to have limiting beliefs is by looking at the family that we were brought up in. Now, it may not be overtly anything that any family member is specifically saying to you. But for example, if no one in your family has ever gone to college and you are the first one who says, I think I can go to college, I can do this. And you look around at your family, your extended family, and you realize no one in my family has ever gone to college. And so you start to adopt the limiting belief in your head of, in this example, well, maybe us as a family, we're just not smart enough or we're not designed to go to college or we're not rich enough to go to college. By looking at your environment and your family, oftentimes, very subconsciously, by looking at what's around you, you have a tendency to adopt limiting beliefs based on your immediate environment. Now the third way we tend to adopt these limiting beliefs is we tend to sometimes look at our own failures or attempts and then we make them an equivalent to a limiting belief. For example, if you tried to do something one time or maybe even two times and you failed, you might say to yourself, well, I guess this dream just isn't for me or I guess what I intended to manifest just isn't meant to happen. Did you know that Thomas Edison, who was not the first person to invent the light bulb, did try 5,000 different variations of the light bulb before he was successful? And the same thing goes for Henry Ford when he created the Model T. He had tried a billion different prototypes before the Model T was actually successful. If you think about it this way, most people who are successful fail more than they succeed before they are actually a success. It is not because you built a business one time and that business came crumbling to the ground that you shouldn't try to rebuild a business. For example, if you've tried to lose weight in the past and you failed time and time again, guess what? Those were not failures, that's just feedback. So when you look at it as feedback and not failures, you're more inclined to let go of those limiting beliefs based on your failures because failures, if you keep trying, are just feedback. Fourth, our limiting beliefs are sometimes handed down to us by society. And we might not even be cognizant exactly where the foundation of these limiting beliefs started. Now, I'm going to give you an example that's kind of current in politics. Now, I pay zero attention to politics. It's not my thing. I'm not particularly interested. I think it's very contentious. I tend to be more on the spiritual plane, a lot less on the political plane, but it's really interesting what's going on in current politics with the new presidential elections that are upcoming and the Democrats that are running for president. On the news, it's alleged that Bernie Sanders in 2018 said to Elizabeth Warren, I don't believe that a woman could be elected as president. Now, whether this is true or whether this is false or whether it's just hearsay, the reason why it tends to come out now is because that's a societal limiting belief. Now, it's not held by everybody, obviously, but it's just one of a societal limiting belief that's been passed down through generations. Since there hasn't yet been a woman president, some people believe that a woman won't be elected as president. That's just one example of a societal limiting belief 
just like as an example, a woman who wants to play pro football, and if it's never been done, then a woman who wants to play pro football might believe, okay, I can't play pro football because a woman has never played in pro football. Now, I don't know if that's the case. Maybe there already has been a woman playing pro football, but that is just an example of a societal limiting belief. Now you're thinking, oh great. Now I have four different instances where I might have my own limiting beliefs plus everybody else's limiting beliefs about what I can and cannot manifest. What do I do with that? So what I want you to do is make a list of your own limiting beliefs based on your top five intentions and desires. So if you haven't yet done the last video, go ahead and go back to the playlist, The Power to Manifest, and look at the last video on ditching New Year's resolutions. Go through the exercise and you will have your list of intentions and desires. I'd like you to look at the top five of your intentions and desires for each of the top five because your limiting beliefs for each of the top five may be very, very different. I'd like you to list at least two or three limiting beliefs for your top five intentions and desires. And I'd like you to go through the exercise where you're writing down why this is a limiting belief for you. And the second thing, which is so important, is I want you to say, is this true? Is this true and is this absolute? What you will find very easily as you go through this exercise is that your limiting beliefs are usually not true. And even if they are true, they're usually not absolute meaning there is always a loophole to transcend a limiting belief. And once you unlock that, then the manifestation of your desires becomes so much quicker, just like it happened for me in my move to California. The reason why it hadn't happened until 2018 is because I had those limiting beliefs, like I said, not totally put on me by myself. It was a collective effort by so many people in my life, but those limiting beliefs were still steadfast and true for me. It wasn't until I unlocked those limiting beliefs and let other beliefs flood in that were not so limiting that I was able to make my move to California. That was one of my biggest and most important dreams in my entire life to date. So go ahead and do that exercise and you will see that your limiting beliefs will then start to unlock and other more empowering beliefs will come into your life. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for subscribing to this channel. Thank you for clicking the bell for all notifications, giving the video a thumbs up. Thank you for sharing this video with other people so we can spread the love and spread the news about your power to manifest. And thank you for supporting this YouTube channel. Honestly, we YouTubers, for the most of us, we do not get a lot of dough in direct relation to YouTube and ads. So the best way is through patrons and for supporting the products that we place here on YouTube. You can buy a book or two or three of my published books. You can also go to Patreon and pledge your support, www.patreon.com forward slash Michelle S. Bondin. And I will see you in the next video.